are the Knicks. They're from Stanford. They make really popular apps. They helped with a group of people that made the IMT Pain app. They are also musicians. So like how a lot of people in the building may make beats. They make beats, they've been playing lots of different instruments and they've paired it with computer science. So just to broaden your idea of how you could or you know, develop music. So today we just want to talk about musical instruments and maybe over the progression of thinking about what actually is an instrument, how do you make music with, with a piece of technology or if it's a piece of wood or if it's a piece of metal. In, in our case, we're, it's going to be a computer. And some of the last couple of years we've been working with uh, a couple of groups, uh, the Stanford Laptop Orchestra, where um, instead of a violin or or a, a clarinet, we're, we're playing laptops and we're playing speakers, or the Stanford Mobile Phone Orchestra where we're playing mobile phones. And, and so we're, we're gonna start trying to think of, think of instruments as, as, as not just a set of instruments that, that exist, that they, they change over time, and we can make instruments, and we can make new music with, with music and actually doing some of the science behind it. What do you think the first musical instrument was? The voice, perfect. The human voice, singing. And so we look at that as one of the oldest instruments, and then well, what, we can, what can we do with, with singing today with our new technology? So we can, we can take a model of a voice, and so this is a, the vocal vowel sounds, like saying E, O, U, A, are the, the vowel sounds, and it's, it's moving your throat back and forth. So that's controlling, and you know, having a joystick control the, basically the shape of your throat. You're, you're really modeling the acoustics of your throat in a way. Like if your throat was a tube that was modulating and you were to kind of hit it with an impulse similar to how your, your vocal cords work, this actually models that. And so as he's moving it around, you actually hear the different vowels. You hear ooh, ee, ah. Put a little, little twist to it. In this particular instrument, you can change the pitch with the keys so we can play a little song. Like using like an actual keyboard to make like a beat noise or like, like yeah, using the like I don't know actual what it's a keyboard or yeah. a synthesizer or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great question. I I, I think we want to just try to originally at, see the sound sounds under the hood. You can just kind of replace them, change it. Originally, it was more drum sounds, but since we wanted to have the same kind of interaction of like drumming, but we wanted a little bit different sound, then I just kind of changed how the sound is going on underneath. So I mean, it's it's maybe not an like if you're actually performing something like I mean a keyboard obviously would be what you want to go with, but we're just trying to trying to explore what you could do. We're gonna move right along. We need four volunteers. So what Nick is gonna be showing you is basically using the fact that the phone built in has a compass, and you can just like we got the position data of my hands, he can get the data of the compass and know which way it's pointing. So the idea is that I'm gonna be able to. To blow into the phone, and then it'll start. Let's see if it. <laughs> so it's, it's tracking the the kind of how loud you're blowing into the microphone, and it knows where you're pointing, and it's sending data to that device. That's I know that they're standing over there, and then it's it's gradually. Uh, making the sound louder and spinning the visuals around. I see that you guys have multiple computers or phones. Does this, um, when you get this app, is it only, like, can you do it on one computer or do you need multiple people to make music with you? That's a good question. Yeah, it's, yeah. since things are, like, uh, I guess the stuff we showed so far, it's kind of not to the point of a commercial application, yeah. like that you just download or... Other than that very last thing you showed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So earlier when we were talking maybe about the difference, like we're just researching things that aren't yet ready for the public. 
and you may take these ideas and form them into something like that's a, a product and try to try to release that. So, so as so far right now, like uh, there, there's sort of research, and, and one of the things we don't really think about too much is almost like what other people would do with it, because that's not currently our focus. And a lot of companies spend a lot of time on the research and development phase, and that's kind of what we're doing, except through a through a university instead of a company. And you take like the best ideas, the most eye-catching ones maybe, or your best for any number of reasons, and turn that into a product. And that, that might be why what someone saw. This next interaction um, uses one of these. This is a 3D controller. And actually, one of the great things about these is that they're only t is that they're only ten dollars um, because this was originally made for like a golf game where you wanted to like know your golf swing, and it just failed miserably, but. <laughs> They have a lot of these left over, so you can just get them really cheap. So actually, we got 40 of them over at the Laptop Orchestra and, and organized a lot of pieces for like a large amount of, of people. I'll just show you how these work. It's basically, this is a joystick like you might normally see, and the joystick gives you two, two dimensions already, like that joystick you saw. And then what this also does is it, it keeps track with these spools how high your hands are. So in the case of this instrument, um, well, basically, there's, there was a couple different interactions, and I only have this one for you guys today, but there was one where you kind of plucked it like a big upright bass, which was pretty fun, and it tracked how far you moved. There was one where we actually placed samples in the air, and the drummer was like just going like that to hit them. And then the one that I was in charge of is this is a harp. So you can imagine, if I'm standing over it, that there are these invisible harp strings in front of me, and when I move my hand, they just they like activate. So this is a good one to this is a good one to try. So I got these strings there now. So if you can imagine that a joystick knows if you're going left, right, up, and down, and then you tell the computer I'm going up or I'm going down. I'm going left. I'm going right. And the computer on your video game, it knows that you're doing that. And so this is just taking that, but then also adding this. So it's just these are all just numbers. That's and maybe that's like another really interesting thing like. It's all controlled data. If you could just like, this is a number from negative one to one, and this is a number from negative one to one, and this is a number from negative one to one, and you just tell a computer that, and it knows where you are, and you don't have to do much more than that. It also, if I go down low, it plays these low notes, and if I go in the middle, it kind of plays middly notes, and if I go really high, I like try and get these really high notes out, so. You can just imagine these kind of strings in front of you. But yeah, imagine that if you're standing over it, imagine the strings are out in front of this box, yeah. 